When it comes to your safety on the road, your tires are one of the most important parts of your scooter. And if you're willing to get a little bit dirty and do the work yourself, you can change that flat without flattening your wallet. Now today, I'll be demonstrating how to swap a tire using this Honda PCX150. But in case you haven't noticed, wheel and tire design has changed very little in the last hundred years. And that means the methods in this video can help you with almost any wheel and tire. Now we need to take a minute to talk about tire changing tools. Now this isn't a task we want to take lightly. Remember, your safety on the road depends on the condition of your tire. So if you damage a tire by using an improper tool, you could be paying for it later. That being said, tire tools are pretty cheap and readily available. Now these are Moose Racing tire irons. I picked them up for around $30 and they're worth every penny. These are Motion Pro rim shields. They're around $15 online and what these do is they go over the wheel and protect the wheel from being marred by your tire lever. These are pretty important if you want to keep your wheels looking nice or you're working on someone else's bike. Now what I've done is I've taken one of my rim shields and cut it in half with a hacksaw. And what that does is gives me an extra rim shield and also allows me to work on smaller diameter wheels. You're going to need a valve core tool. Now these come in all shapes, sizes, and prices. This one is pretty deluxe. It has a built-in torque wrench that won't let you over torque the valve core. It's not super necessary to have the torque wrench, but it is nice. This is just soapy water. I've diluted some run-of-the-mill dish soap with tap water. Last but not least, I like using a C-clamp and a few pieces of scrap wood. And you'll see how I use these later on in the video. Now before we get to ripping and a tearing, let's take a minute to talk about wheel and tire anatomy. Now the innermost circle of your tire is called the bead. And the bead is what actually makes contact with the wheel and creates a seal. The corresponding part of the wheel that the bead sits on is called the bead seat. Now the outermost portion of the wheel is called the lip. And the lip actually has a larger diameter than the bead itself. This prevents the tire from coming off the wheel in either direction. The center of the wheel has a smallest diameter and it's called the bead drop. Now let me show you how this whole thing works together. Let's say this is your wheel. And this strip of cloth is the bead of your tire. Now the bead of the tire has a smaller circumference than the lip of the wheel, right? Otherwise the tire would come right off the wheel. So how do you move the bead over the lip without tearing it? Well, you move one side of the bead into the bead drop. This allows you enough slack to pull the bead over the lip nice and easily. And it works exactly the same way for installation. If you were to try and force the bead over the lip, you're going to tear the bead. But if you insert one side of the bead into the bead drop, you have enough slack to nicely pull the bead over the lip. Now changing tires can be frustrating, especially your first time around. So if you feel yourself getting frustrated, take a step back and take a deep breath before trying again. Remember, your safety on the road depends on it. So take your time and do a nice job. Now your first step is always going to be to remove the wheel. And for most scooters, if you want to remove the rear wheel, you're going to have to first remove the exhaust. If you'd like to see how I remove the wheel on this Honda PCX150, check out my video here. Now your first step is going to be to remove the valve core from the valve stem. For this, you're going to need your valve core tool. You can kind of bend the stem out of the way so you can put your core tool in there. Okay, now we've let all the air out of the tire, we can break the bead, which means, you know, like I said before, removing the bead from the bead seat. Now to do this, I use my C-clamp and a piece of wood to protect the rim. And all I'm going to do 
Just press the wood against the wheel and tighten the clamp. So you can see the clamp is pushing the tire away from the bead seat. Let me get a little bit, give it a little help with my tire spoon. There we go. And there it is. Now we're just going to do the same for the other side. All right. Again, I'm just going to use my tire iron to help pry the bead away from the bead seat. There it goes. All right, at this point we have the bead broken down on both sides of the wheel. That means the bead is off the bead seat and the tire you can see is kind of just loose on there. Now at this point I should mention if you're working on a wheel that's equipped with a disc brake, you're going to want the disc to be on top of the wheel as you're working. If it was on the underside, you risk moving this thing around and bending your disc. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our soapy water or scooter lube and we're going to generously apply it all the way around the outside of the wheel. We're going to try and get the soapy water down in between the bead and the lip. Okay. Now I'm putting my valve stem off to one side because I'm going to be pulling up on the bead and I'm going to be dropping this bead into the bead drop. Okay, and if the valve stem is in the way, it's going to inhibit this bead from slipping into the bead drop. So, I'm ready to begin. I'm going to grab my uh, rim shield here and put it on the rim just because I, you know, this scooter doesn't belong to me and I want to make sure it stays pretty nice for the customer. You're going to put the spoon in between the rim and the bead and you're going to pry backwards on this tire lever, okay? And while I'm prying backwards, I'm also going to be pushing the bead down into the bead drop. See that? came right up. And you see this suck down like that? That was perfect. Okay, now that I have one down, I can put my rim shield a little further away and take the next bite. Now don't get greedy here and take too big of bites, especially if you're trying to take the tire off and you want to put it back on. You're just going to take little bites as you go. All right, when you get to a certain point, you're going to feel the tire wants to bring itself off the wheel, and the rest you can finish by hand. So we're making progress. We have the top bead free. So now I'm going to go back with my soapy water and I'm going to lube the bottom bead so we can bring the bottom bead up the exact same way we did the top bead. I can get a generous amount on there. Work it around. Make sure it's nice and lubed up. Okay, starting with our rim shield to protect the rim. And the bottom bead, you're going to kind of want to space out just a little bit. So I'll take a bite. I'm going to guide the bead 
we're pushing the bead upwards so it goes into the rim drop here, the bead drop. Grab a bite, kind of ease it up. That one was a little tough, take a little bit less. If it doesn't want to go real easy, take a smaller bite. You know, you don't want to be forcing the tire at this point. Or really at any point. Taking small bites all the way around. Being careful not to use too much force. You know, sometimes the rim shield creates too much distance between the bead and the rim and you just kind of have to be careful with your tire iron. Work it all the way around. Alright, so now I just felt the tire let go. I can just pull it right off the rim. There we go. There's the old tire off. We're going to pay attention to which direction this tire was going on the wheel. It's a directional wheel on the right side of the bike. So when I get my new tire, I want to make sure I go the same direction. First things first, we're going to apply our soap. Make sure this bead is good and soapy, good and wet. We want it to slide right on there without any problems. Now to set this tire on there, you want to do as much as you can with your hands before using your tools. You're going to notice when you're trying to get this thing started, it's going to want to rock all the way around the wheel and you'll end up chasing your tail. So what I like to do is put it on with my hands, try and force it up into the bead, and I hold it right there with one hand, and I very carefully walk it on with my other. See, now I've got it down. I'm going to hold down with that arm. Make sure it doesn't walk back up. Get the next bite. And I'm constantly holding pressure on the tire. If this thing comes up, it's just going to work its way off in a circle. And you know what? I'm going to grab my other tire iron. I'm using this one as a placeholder. I'm just going to work this thing down. Back and forth. See, it's getting tight there, which means that it's not all the way in the seat. There it goes, nice and easy. The next little bite. Nice and easy. And there it is. We have the bottom bead started. Now all we have to do is set this top bead into the bead seat, and we're good to go. So, starting with a liberal amount of soapy water. All right. Now we're going to take a bite, and I'm going to stitch it on slowly. Take my bite. And now, as I push this down, I'm guiding it into the bead drop. You see that? I'm just using the lever to help it put itself in there. With my other tire spoon, I'm going to grab a piece. Kind of drop it down in there, okay, now we started. Now I can push this in with my hand, guide it into the bead drop, grab another bite, push it in. Now I will admit this is a lot more difficult on a 10 inch wheel just because they want to wiggle around a lot more, but the principle is the same. Grab a bite, put it on. Grab a bite, put it down. Grab a bite, put it down. Just working it all the way around the rim. Right now I'm kind of putting my body weight on it. Just make sure this gets down to the bead drop. There we go. I'm going to grab a bite from this side now. Put it down. Okay, grab another bite. Put it down. Could use a little more soap. Soapy water is your best friend at this point. You really don't want to stress this bead and stretch it. You'll get a wobbly tire for sure. And I'm kind of pushing it back down into the bead again. 
right? I'm going to hold this place with my hand, grab a bite, put it down. I'm really not using that much force. Just kind of letting the tire do what it wants to do. Slide over the wheel, grab a bite, and put it down. I'm using the tire spoon in this direction, so the curve goes over the wheel and right between the tire. Grab a bite, put it down. And the last bit, we'll just do by hand. There we are. All right, so we have our wheel put together with our tire. Now, we have to seat the bead. And for that, I'm gonna go get my air compressor. All right, all we have left to do now is air this tire up. And the air in the tire is gonna force the bead against the lip, okay? Now, I still have my valve core out and that's going to allow a lot more air to go in at one point in time. Now I'm going to use compressed air for this because it's a lot faster and easier. But you can use a bike pump. It's all going to be the same. Here we go. Just like that. The bead pops into place. I'm going to grab my valve core. You can see the bead is nicely seated all the way around the wheel. It has that nice little indicator there. Put the valve core in. And there it is, your brand new tire mounted on your wheel. All by yourself. Well, the more that you ride, the more you'll probably find that good tires can make for a good day the same way bad tires can make a bad day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If it helped you out, or if you have suggestions for future episodes of Scooter 911, leave me a comment below. You know, I make these videos to empower people to take repairs into their own hands and to remind them that there's nothing to be afraid of. A scooter is just a bucket of bolts, and the people who work on them aren't smarter than you. So until next time, keep it shiny side up. Now that I have one down. Okay, now that I have one down. This whole thing works together. With a phone call. Okay, now that I have one down, I can take one, take two, take 11. And one pump jump. That's yeah, it. There you go. I really hate having neighbors come by.